My name is Paul Tranny. I'm going to be talking about Illustrator. Uh, that's from a year ago. It says 30 years. It's actually 31 years old, but everybody knows after 30, you stop keeping track anyways. So it is all good. Look here. Look. How many of you remember this? You've probably been working in Illustrator a while. Look. Little, oh, what is this? Yeah, this is, this is what you'd work in. And you couldn't even, like, you couldn't even see the results. You had to open up a separate window. Do you remember doing this? You'd have to go, okay, let's open up a uh, new window. That's what we'd have to do. And then you'd set this one to preview. And then you'd draw over here and try to make a flower, but you'd just end up with a bunch of random circles, right? Um, one thing you can't, actually, let me show you this real fast, because this has been here a while. Go down here, like, rotate tool. Do we have... This is probably rotate. Hold down the Alt key. I'll click right here. And then we'll do angle 40. This is actually pretty cool. Angle of rotation of 45 degrees. And we'll just hit copy. And then D, D, D. There's our flower. Beautiful. It's amazing, isn't it? We're done. This is awesome. And uh, this is Illustrator 1.0. So uh, one tool that's not in here is the blend tool, which you may or may not use. Does anybody know when we introduced the blend tool? Just any ideas? Take a guess. Because it was the next version. In Illustrator 88, you'll find the blend tool in here, which just blows my mind, by the way. The blend tool, I use it all the time. Maybe I'm the only one that uses it. But either way, I think it's super cool. All right, so let's dive into this. I'll just, I'll just minimize that. That's not going to be the version we're using. I have this one that we'll be using, and uh, we can dive into this. In fact, what, I'm doing, what am I doing right now? I hit Shift F. I'm actually in Illustrator, because the first feature I want to show you, and this is brand new as of, geez, this morning, is the fact that we have a presentation mode. So how many of you go like this? You hit F, right, and you'll hit F again, and you'll have all this junk out here, and you're trying to show the client a logo in the center but you got all this junk. I know you do, I do. We now have presentation mode. So window right here. Ah, oh, actually, view presentation mode. And then I can just use my arrow keys. My name is Paul Tranny, Evangelist for Adobe. You can see the slide link right down there. You can always follow me on Twitter, at Paul Tranny, and uh, I will tweet that out after this session. It's actually being recorded right now. It's a good thing I already got a stain on my shirt, but it is being recorded for viewing later. All right, so not to worry. Everybody should be on the same page. These are all the need to, need to know fundamentals you may have missed. Time savers topic, talking basically about everything, manipulating lines on down the line. But I want to make sure everybody's on the same agenda. This is kind of what I'm going to follow. I'm going to talk about optimizing Illustrator and the stuff that you should know that you might have missed. We'll dive into shapes and lines, colors and patterns. A product that's 31 years old, even in this room, we have varying levels of experience. So I'm going to try to, my best to make everybody happy. Managing, uh, excuse me, we'll get into text, transforming and manipulating, so a little bit more advanced stuff, and then uh, exporting out a lot of this content. So that's the current agenda. And like I said, I'm in Illustrator, which this works out great. I can start to... Uh, get down to work, but before I do so, I want to point out a couple things just in preferences when it comes to optimizing Illustrator. I'll go down to uh, user interface, and this is a brand new thing right here. UI scaling, right? So I can actually scale the UI depending on my monitor resolution. So if you have a high DPI monitor or laptop, you're, the tools got really small all of a sudden, right? And now we can make them larger, at least clickable, and all of that. Uh, especially as you get into like 4K monitors, things like that, we want to make sure we can actually use the tools that are actually there. There's only th a couple stops here, but if you have a 4K monitor or 7K monitor, congratulations, you're super lucky. And then it'll I'll actually give you more stops. And another new thing is the fact that when I view something at 100%, if I'm, if, an, an inch will basically be an actual inch, regardless of your resolution or whether you're in high DPI, whatever the case may be. 100% is actually 100%. An inch will be an inch. Put that ruler up to your screen and everything will be just fine. So that's nice. All right, so I'll just keep this as is. So that's pretty good. Clicking OK. Let's kind of dive into some of this. And uh, 
quite frankly, we should be pretty familiar with most of the tools in here. Um, actually, you know what, maybe I, maybe I want it to be like back in the day when it was a much simpler, like these tools, this was much more manageable. Look at how complex that's gotten, the toolbar. So much stuff, right? And now at this point, what we can do is we can actually customize the toolbar. Right over here, all I need to do is click right down here. Click. Thank you. And from there, you can remove any one of these uh, tools that you want, right? So like, how many of you really, do you really need the hand tool? You don't. How many, you can use the space bar, drag that over here. Another one that I already removed, and I know it just drives you nuts, probably drives me nuts, perspective grid tool, I hate it when I click on that. It's like, oh, how do I shut it off now? Right, big problem. So say goodbye to it, you are staying there, that's for sure. You could uh, start to nest them as well. I just kind of have it set up like this. I really like how this is set up for the most part. I can actually open this up and select, select advanced or basic and save or manage your toolbars as well. So this is kind of the setting I have. I kind of kept everything as is. And by the way, you can move things around too. I can swap those two just like that. And again, you could remove tools on somebody else's machine just to mess with them. Be like, I don't know, did you, did you upgrade? Are you, are you up to date on your subscription to Creative Cloud? Maybe that's it. No, don't do that. That would be so cruel. <laughs> uh, diving into this, we do know shortcut keys, right? That's why I hardly need uh, even magnifying glass, some of this other stuff. Don't really need to sweat it. We know sort of the fundamentals in terms of shortcuts, because again, this is all about optimizing Illustrator. So what does, uh, what does Command D do? You got it, as long as you have that, taking that. And let's just bring that right over here. I can also hold down the Option key, or Alt key, right? Drag and, hi Barb. <laughs> uh, just so, da -da 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 -da. that's been around there forever. Super easy to do, right? We all get that. I'm going over some of these fundamentals. You should all know this stuff. Um, oh, here's another one, like, what do I do? How do I, what's the shortcut for increasing the stroke? It's a trick question, because there is no shortcut, and there should be. Why isn't there a shortcut for that, right? And sure enough, I've actually baked one in. You can actually see that getting bolder. Uh, but that's an action that I would do. So right over here, happy, I'm glad this is being recorded. I'm doing a scale up and a scale down. So I'm, I actually created an action to do that. So the scale down, scales down the corners, strokes, and effects. 90%, I can always turn that off if I want to, like scaling the corners, but that increases the line larger and smaller, right? Um, pretty straightforward with shortcuts. We get that. I wanna do this, actually. Let me show you, ooh, what about this one? You ready for this? Let's actually select this star here, and it might be on the background. Okay, here it is. Let's send it to the back. There we go. All right. Uh, have you done this before? Um, I'm going to scale this up, right? And I'm going to hold down the... Let's actually see if I can just make this again. So I'm just going to grab star tool or anything. I'm going to click and drag, and if I hold down the tilde key, it actually made that design, right? Hold down the tilde key, and it's like the duplicate on drugs is what that is, right? <laughs> Super cool, really hard to create otherwise, but not that hard because I could use transform for that. So nonetheless, I made all of those. That looks good. Let me dive into this. Check this out. How many of us do this? Like, you're going to trace an object. I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to grab, you know, the ellipse, and I'm just trying to mimic this part of the circle. And you'll get it wrong. You're like, ah! I'm off. You're like, oh, that's stupid. Delete. Let's try this again. I'm going to get right here and try to get, oh, I got, I'm off. So, and you want to get it, you want to get it exact, right? Check this out. I can click and drag. And then if I, I wow, I was not supposed to do that good. <laughs> <laughs> I nailed it. Wow. Space bar. Space bar will move it around. So if you, if you get it off, oh, space bar. I haven't released the mouse yet. Oh, now it's in position and I continue to work, right? So space bar is, again, another huge tip as you're drawing. All right. So far, so good. Ooh, let me, do, let me show you this. This is really awesome. 
check this out. I'm going to turn this on. I'm going to select all this stuff. Okay, so this is another pro tip, which I love. Say, for instance, the client came back to me and they said, I really love this design, uh, but I want it to be, I want all the lines to be thicker. Right? I want all of the lines to be thicker, okay? What, I have to go in and, and change everything? I don't know, 200%? I don't know, what do we, how do I do that? Well, check this out. This is how you could do this. You could say, hey, you know what? Uh, at this point, I could scale this down at per usual, right? It scales down. Let me think about this. I'm already confusing my head a little bit. <laughs> but I want to turn off. This is what you do. You turn off, and I think I heard somebody say it over here. Maybe you don't, you don't want to scale stroke in effects. So you turn that off initially when I scale it down. And if I scale it down 200%, so that's what I do, I'd scale it down 200%, right? So 50%, make it 50%, the, ooh, not the position, 50% the size, just like that. And I've doubled the size of that line. Now, uh, if I go into general, and I want to scale stroke effects. It's a matter of turning it off initially. So when I shrink it down, oh, the lines are really going to be really thick because it's much smaller, right? And I'm like, that's perfect. The, si the lines are twice as thick now that it's half the size. And I'm like, perfect. Go back in here, check that box, and now I can scale it up. I should have scaled it up even more. But as I scale it up, you can see those lines are all thicker, uniformly thicker. So if you're doing a complex like medical illustration, diagram, something complex, I think this is really helpful. OK, moving on from that, let's kind of dive into uh, some other things we can do. And initially, what I actually do is I, I hate the fact that uh, I'm constantly having to mix, make new swatches, right? So I'm always using a gradient like this. So what do you do? You come in here and you apply some default gradient that I even already got rid of, right? But don't you hate having to apply gradients each time and, uh, you know, changing it from the default white to black, right? So typically what I will do is I will m mix my color, make my swatch, add my swatch, just like that, boom. And uh, I would basically set up a master file. I set up a master template file like I have right over here. This is everything you need. Look at all this stuff. Look at all those colors. All these great, I use these gradients all the time because I hate starting with this initial one and always changing it. So I'll add all the gradients that I want. I'll add some other patterns, some other color swatches right in here. Another thing I'll do is I'll make my own brushes over here. So I'm setting up this master file. I'm saying, hey, you know what? Anytime I make a new file, just have those brushes ready. I don't have to hunt down that Illustrator file where I made the brush, open it up, and copy it over. I'd make this one, all you need file, save it to my desktop, call everything, or all you need, and then you put it in a certain location as I click OK. So all my brushes all my colors, all my symbols, all of these, this long list of items right over here, this is everything that I can save with this file, which is fantastic, right? So I don't have to worry about that anymore. Then what I do is I open up Illustrator. I'm, I don't think I'm gonna do a restart. I think you get it. Uh, but right over here, this is where I put it in this new document profiles folder, okay? So once I put it in there, You'll see it says Illustrator 23 right in here, and this is where you'll drop it, right in here, okay? There's new document profiles. So that's what I'll do, and now when I start this up, I'll go File, New. Depending on which one you started with, technically the file I started with was a print version, but there it is. I'll hit Create, and all my brushes are going to be in there. You have to do that. You do that once. You set up all your gradients, whatever stuff you want, all those goodies, and you can see now that it travels, you know, with the file in this case, you can see actually that stroke and style was applied. You get the idea. All right, so let's go on from there. That's set up. Let's move on. Let's go into a little bit more of the drawing capabilities. All right, so... 
kind of starting in here. Um, I'm not going to belabor uh, Bezier curves and things like that. I do want to make sure we're all on the same page. But a lot of times it's going to be, of course, drawing with the pen. You get it. I typically encourage people to just draw, when in doubt, draw a straight line. Like, I get it. You're going to go in here and you're going to curve that out. But it's OK to just do some straight points. Bam, bam, bam. It's all right. I'll just do straight lines just like that. I'll do that all day long, right, if I, when in doubt, OK? And let's just change the color of this to something else. You can see, there it is. Right, so obviously I have some angles in there. And uh, using my anchor point tool is what I'll typically do, but rolling over this, rather than manipulating or making a new BZA like this, you'll make a new one. Right? And you'll be like, okay, I gotta curve this out and do all that stuff. Maybe take this other side and try to curve this one and all this stuff. It's, it's way too complex. All you really need to do is come in here and grab that, and this is your curvature tool. So with straight lines is where this works best. I don't have to worry about the curve or the Bezier points there. I can just take this and start curving all the parts that I need, especially like right down here. Right? This is a much easier way to work than manipulating BZA points, right, at the end of the day. So that's what I would do, kind of give her apparently a super thick profile line there. It's kind of ridiculous. But that's one of the profiles I changed, because I feel like the one point line is almost, in some cases, too small. Uh, you know, let's kind of dive into this. We can get into the nose, right? We can draw out with uh, the pen tool. Actually, I'll just do that real fast right in here. All right, just like that. And if you're not using this, you should be right in here. The width tool is your best friend, plain and simple. I would use this rather than out trying to outline the eyebrow, especially in this case. I actually want it to be a little bit more uniform. Click width tool. We can make it thicker right there, thinner on that end. Make sure her eyebrows are on fleek, as the kids say. <laughs> right. A little too on fleek. That's a, there's a lot happening there. Wow. Scale it down some. But nonetheless, that's typically what I would do, even when it comes to sort of the hair. Let's actually just turn on a layer and just start drawing and doing some more natural uh, drawing in this case. So again, just some simple outlining so far. Um, oh yeah, width tool right even here. Oh, why do I have that still turned on? Let's get rid of that. Um, where? Actually, what's going on there, by the way, I could actually redo that, but I'll just uh, probably typically use the pencil tool because I feel like it's more natural, right? I'll draw that out, but just using the width tool here, I can say, hey, you know what? Let's, let's actually make it thinner on one side. Just holding down the Alt key, I can make it thinner on one side and then uh, sort of get the right uh, position for that. I can make it thicker or thinner depending on either side. I'm going to do some more of that. In fact, I'm going to just start drawing right in here as I lock down these layers. Let's grab the pencil. And, uh, you know, I'll start drawing. And typically when you draw with a pencil, this is, this is typically what it looks like. It isn't even that great. Like, as I start drawing with the, in the hair and, uh, you know, I'll just draw up here. It's, it's too... It's too, too, too correct for its own good. Now, one pro tip right in here, I don't know if you knew this, since I have the path still selected, I can redraw over this. And you'll try to like make less Bezier points or whatever. You're like, ah, it never gets it quite right. Double clicking on that tool, just like a lot of tools, will give me these additional options. So I jump in here, I always have this set to smooth, just like that. And I'll typically turn on this. Uh, again, keep selected. And then option key will toggle to the smooth tool. But this is like taking it from you to good, <laughs> right? Because that's, that's what's happening. It's like, OK, now it's going to be, should be like much better as I draw with less points. And that's what I'd start doing here. Maybe I'll just change this width profile, get some nice hair, right? And start drawing this out. Ah, I hate it when this happens too, by the way. <laughs> OK, let me think about this, because it should be right in here. First thing that happened is it uses this basic style. I just use this new width. I'm like, I just want to draw the hair. Just let me draw the hair. 
Because now I have to go in here and you, you're serious now? You're serious. You're serious, serious illustrator? But I have, to, I have to go in there and make this change, and it doesn't keep that last style. So that's why you go into here too. Uh, graphic styles. I actually might be forgetting this, by the way. Uh, wait, it's right in here. Up, up. There we go. This is where it's hidden. They hide it on you. Where's, where's the Illustrator team? Why are you guys hiding this? Like, look. New, this is, I'm going to go to the appearance panel right in here. New art has basic appearance. So it just sets it back to the default. Each sets it back to the default. Like, oh, and then I got to change it. And then I got to change it. And then I got to, ugh, drives me nuts. Right? Turn that off. They're using some weird reverse psychology gets in my head. Right? But that's what I want. You, new art has base, doesn't have the basic appearance, has the appearance that I define at this point as I kind of drag that out. And thank you very much. Now I can go through and draw all of her glorious Medusa-like hair in this case, right? So remember that, that's, that's actually really huge. There's more I can do there. I'm just kind of drawing this out more and more luxurious hair that she needs. Let's actually go beyond that because I'm thinking. I would actually like to Make her look even better. Oh, by the way, let me actually turn this on. Let me show you kind of the final. I know this is looking pretty rough. Since I've talked about changing the default style of your brush, whatever you're drawing, do that, yes. Use the width tool, right? And use the width tool creatively. In fact, let's just drag out a line, if I could. Because this is for, say, for instance, a music festival. I would like to maybe have some of her, like a, a sound wave would be really cool, kind of traveling right through here, okay? So there's my line, using the width tool and adding like as many points as I want, right? Just like that, zoop, zoop, just like that. And let's adjust this even more. In fact, I think I have a width profile I already have created. Here's my sound wave profile. Let's actually change the color of this as well to something a little bit more exciting, and this is more along the lines of a fun. Again, using all these different width profiles, I've just changed this. And what was normally pretty complex is really just a simple line that I can take and modify super easy. Right? So then obviously you can see sort of this final, which is some fun lines drawn in here. So that's what I want to do. I want to use the, the width tool and I kind of go on to sort of brushes. I'm thinking, OK, there's more I can do with brushes. And uh, let's actually just kind of select some of these lines right in here. Um, let's actually turn this on. I don't know if you're using brushes or not, but I find them super powerful. Anytime, even if it's just for one thing, like a simple snake in this case, this is what I'd want to do. And I'll add to the hair in a second. Right over here for this object. You should know about making brushes. I'm going to grab, say, this segment right here, drop it in here. Let's make a pattern brush, happens to be my favorite, because I want this inside to duplicate all these different ways. And let's give it a nice original corner. That's cool. Uh, from here, I can give it a head. I can give it a tail. Sure enough, these are actually symbols that I've already predefined. If I can find them somewhere in here, they should be in here or not, because I actually haven't, I don't know if I've I don't know if it's part of this one. But uh, let's actually see right over here. Yeah, there it is. Here's the final. Let me just double click on this. You can see right in here, this is actually not a symbol, but it's a pattern. OK, so that's what I've done. This is the pattern for the head and the tail. And that's what I want to go with using even, again, just the simple pencil. Here's a line, clicking right there. And there's, again, just my snake that I can manipulate any way I want in this case, right? So let's see where we're at with the layers. And whatever, you get the idea. It's slowly wrapping around her neck. Just kidding, that's weird. I'll stop that. <laughs> it was weird. Uh, but what I can do from there is just really have total flexibility. 
So all of these lines right in here, I can say, hey, you know what? Let's make them more unique by adding, again, just some leaves, OK? Super easy to do. We want to change that to something a little bit more bold with a pop of color. This goes way beyond, I think, what Photoshop can do. The fact that this is vector, and I can change my mind at any time. Maybe now she is Medusa. <laughs> wow, that works. That's weird. So total control. I absolutely love it. And this is why I like Illustrator. Let me change my mind later on, because I was probably wrong the first time, whatever the case may be. OK, so we have that. We have Medusa hair. Maybe I'll undo that and continue to work. Let's move on. i got more things to cover. So again, using basically those are vector-based brushes, super easy to work with. As we've drawn or created what we want, we want to be able to take what we've made and start to add color to it. Since we used our profile, we have all those gradients already ready to go, easy to change. If you're not using, uh, if you're not using global colors, well, you, you're using them maybe whether you're aware of it or not. But uh, basically, right over here, I can add a color. Let's say this is a unique red. This is what I mean by a global color. Whenever this box is checked, it's checked by default now. It says, hey, if I apply this to everything and I need to change it later on, it's going to change it everywhere. OK? So that's what a global color, that's turned on by default now, uh, which is good, done. That's why these all have little notches cut out of, out of them. They're global colors. So that's what I would do. That's great if you want to change one color, right? I can change it everywhere. But what if we want to change all of the colors? And honestly, what if we want to explore colors? And you should be aware of this. You're probably overwhelmed by it to a certain degree. But I'm going to go to Edit, Edit Colors. Basically, I'm going to recolor this artwork. OK? So let's just explore the different things we can do. In fact, how many, how many colors do you think are in here? In, in this, in this design? Don't guess. I don't know either. I have no idea. It says auto. Do I, I, oh, let's, let's actually check. One, two, three, four. No. You could literally, I just, just found this out, by the way, like just before we started this session. If you auto, oh, shoot. Let's do this. I just put my scroll mouse in here, and I just started going through. Because basically, I'm, 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 I'm having this pair down to four colors. But if you put your mouse in there, and then you just go back one, there's 25 colors. That's how many colors are in there with all the gradients. So I thought that was kind of fascinating. Uh, nonetheless, typically what people do is they'll go into edit. Maybe you counted all these dots. We can lock these down. I said exploring with different colors. We can shift this. You've seen this before, right? You might have played with it some more. You know, it gets, it gets pretty fun. I can make it uh, desaturated more, uh, or more bright or more saturated right in here to make all those color po colors pop and start to roll through this just, just, for, exper just for experimenting uh, with colors. So that's what I'd use Edit Colors for. There's more uh, that it can do. Actually, I kind of like that. We'll go with it. I love all these electric colors right now. Uh, but let's move on. Let's move on to something like this. Say, for instance, this is a print job, right? And, uh, you know, who knows how many colors are here? But it needs to be like a four color print job, or I really need to pare this down, right? Select all those colors, same process. If you want to get to the shortcuts, this little color wheel right here, recolor artwork, click. Again, don't let the name fool you, because right in here, and I was doing this earlier, we can change this to just four colors. Because look at how many different uh, sort of like reds are in there. But let's give it that, those four colors. Right, let's go up a little bit. You know, we'll do 10. And let's say I want to change all of uh, these this sort of mustard yellow to this yellow, I can grab it and move it on up. And now all those colors will be remapped, right? There were two of them in there. They were a shade off. So I'm able to define how the colors get pared down in this process to get the look that I want. I can then save it as a color group and be on my way, right? So recoloring artwork is great for exploring color. I have really total control right in here, right? And not only that, it's good for paring down all those colors to really find out what you have, especially with gradients. That's why there were so many colors. It's those crazy gradients in there. 
Yeah, I can crank up this saturation and then click OK. All right, it works for me. Let's move on from that. Check this out. You get this. Boom. Here we are. Gradients. Boring. Good job. Good job, Paul. It's so boring. Add a gradient right in there. We have new color stops for the gradient tool. So I can see this, right? And I can use my gradient tool over here. How many of you do this? You like, you want to like maybe like maybe this is a radial burst, you know, and you want to like move it over. I want to move it to the center. So you grab this, you do that. How many of you do? I know you do it. <laughs> if you grab this bar for one, just grab the bar. I didn't, I didn't know that for so many, so many years, I feel. But also, these, all these different control points are actually easier to grab. And this is just a better way to work. Rather than manipulating uh, sort of the gradient transition over here, I can actually ma manipulate it right here. right? So that's just, in general, easier to work with. I can start to manipulate that any way I want. I'm going to go beyond that as well. So again, let's just add something to the background and make it a little more fun. And like they talked about today, you know, there's some cool things you can do, right? Here's something. This is actually using the, the gradient mesh tool. Does anybody who, who's worked with the gradient mesh tool? And I'm surprised you're still working in Illustrator to this day. It's amazing because it gets awfully complex awfully fast, right? And you saw this this morning. Again, this took, this took me a while. This is actually using the gradient mesh tool too, by the way, this pepper. So you can get some spectacular results. It's actually super complex. I think I have that layer locked. It's really awesome, but it's overly complex. So let's just turn that off. And uh, just like they showed earlier today, we can now manipulate this content much easier. So let's pull this out, gradient. It's this third option, right? Freeform gradient tool. You can do some searches. We used to call it the diffusion gradient. Uh, right over here, um, actually, let's just go ahead and change that to a little yellow and change this side to something else. And let's put one in the middle just to show you. Let's make this red. I don't know if they really, sh really got to this point, but look at how these colors start to interact in a super interesting way as I start to put them one over the other. It's almost like it's light. It's like a mis mixture between like a watercolor and a light. But you're actually getting, look at this nice like orange color between those two as they come closer together. Uh, so again, super cool what you could do uh, with the freeform gradient tool. Uh, I'm going to show you the lines, but I think in order to do that, I'm going to, I'm going to switch over to something that I've found really <laughs> that's kind of bothered me in the past week. <laughs> And I'm like, oh, I love it. Phil's coffee, anybody? Phil's. Yeah. Only a couple? Yeah, it's good, right? There is one, like, up on uh, Fig Figora, however you say it, up by the Westin. Fantastic coffee. They put mint in their coffee. It's crazy, but it's so good. But what, one thing they have is right here, like, look, so annoying. This gradient, it would not go straight down like that. You just use a linear, you got lazy. I love them. Don't get mad at me, Phil's. I love you. I really do. I'm just. Best mobile app ever, too, by the way. You can order coffee in advance. They do it so well. But this is a case for maybe where you would want to uh, sort of fix it. So right in here, selecting that, opening up the gradient. You get it. In this case, I'm going to change this to a freeform gradient. I really need to add those other colors over here initially. But from there, what I would do is I can actually add in like a line that might work out a little better in this case. So click. Click, click. There's one line, right? And then let's add a second line. Let's change this to, you get the idea, you know, on this side, like that. So that's typically what I would do in this case, just to get this to look a little better. I've already kind of gone through that work, as you could imagine. Just clicking through. Again, a simple example, but this is going to be much more uh, organic and easier to work with. You do have to switch back to points to move these points, but this is something that I want. Like, give me that highlight and pick it. I need to pick a better, a better orange at that point. Uh, all in all, that's, this is kind of what you have, at least for my final version. Uh, it doesn't go quite to the end, and I think I'm the only one, and people in this room would be the only ones that would appreciate this, right? 
I'm like, what are you talking about? I even did that with this, uh, this um, nice steam. Thank you, that's the word. Not smoke. Your coffee's not on fire usually. <laughs> steam, compared to the original, was like that. I, I never got coffee like that, just like floating. Like, so hard. It's so hard to drink that way. I keep like, getting it in my eye, right? But again, give me something more natural that's easy to work with. And out of all the tools, as, as a creative, I find this one's going to be the most beneficial and easy to work with. Right? Done and done. So let's move on from there. Let's move on to this. How many, how many lines do you think are in here that make up this? Any guesses? At all? Five. Close. I'm going to do command Y to show you that it's only one. Oh, look at you show off, Paul. Oh, you're so cool. You made that with one line. It's totally like a graphic that you'd brag about. I show you this just to show you that the appearance panel, like some people still don't know about the appearance panel or where it is, seeing as I've closed it. But um, here it is. It's just a bunch of lines, excuse me, fills and strokes being applied. These circles are actually dashes. So if I move this off, and maybe we'll shrink that down. Uh, you know, this green dot, that's actually a stroke overlaid over the top of that. These larger ones are also a stroke with a dash, okay? And I do this to point out that as you're working with colors and different things, you don't have to take a shape, duplicate it on top, and add a gradient to it, right? We've seen too many files like that. You just layer on all those fills on top of each other, right? Which I will be doing later, but it's right here. Just add a new stroke, add a new fill and you're well on your way. So that's typically what you do. It gets really fun as you start working with patterns, right? So right in here, I can add a new uh, fill in this case and pick a pattern right in here. And now she kind of has a polka dot dress, right? Come in here, you get the idea, right? Just adding these new fills on down the line, right? And this gets really interesting as I start to add, start to mix in these different patterns together because they're actually semi-transparent, right? So that's what I would do. Start using, using patterns to make interesting combinations, right? We can see that happening. Probably wondering how to make patterns. Let's, kinda, let's just do that really fast. I think I have this file right here. Let's select all of these. Object, pattern, make. Right in here, wait for that to open up. Really, any items that you want, you start to see it duplicate accordingly. Where you see this, these gaps, that's where you want to adjust it, right? So I just take this building right here and then kind of move it down here, okay? Um, you could see that work. I'm going to show kind of one issue that you might run into if I can work out this scenario. Let's move this down right there. We'll see that, and the problem is that this building is now in front of that building. That doesn't work with perspective. You basically have full control when it comes to that. I just turn on this one. Make sure the bottom is in the front, right? Clicking that, and now it fixes that problem. Hopefully everybody sees that, right? And I don't need to just do this grid view. I can mix this up as much as possible, especially if I'm making something look random. I'd maybe do brick by row or mix up the columns to make something interesting for a pattern, okay? That's done. I can always double click on that fancy little square. Ready? Add it to my swatches. It's going to be baked in there, ready for me to use. You get the idea. As soon as I click done, it's good to go. All right? So using those different combinations, we're doing pretty well on time. This is good. Uh, anything else that I need to talk about in here? That's, that's about it for patterns. It does put them in here. You can start to see them. Uh, these multicolor patterns, so don't think that they just need to be black and white. Uh, I wanted them black and white so I could see the color through them, right? But you can see all of them right in there. Click done. And now we can move on with that. We have that made. We have our patterns in this design. We've gone over appearance, adding, adding different gradients, consolidating colors, and recoloring recoloring, uh, graphics. So I kind of want to switch gears and jump into text. This is awesome. Uh, really, really cool, because they had that announcement today. They're like 14,000, wait, how many? 15,000. 
I was like, there's almost as many fonts as there are people here. Everybody gets a font, <laughs> you know. 14,000 people in attendance, 15,000 fonts. I don't know, a crazy amount. I get it, you're gonna wanna install all of them and use maybe eight, <laughs> right? <laughs> but it's so easy. In fact, let's start over here, click. Uh, I can click and say this is, so this is gonna be my style magazine. And this is another thing that's kind of annoying, right? So I get this text right here. What is it, what is it de default to? Yeah, it starts with Myriad, yeah, Myriad. It's like, contradicts its name, Myriad. It's always there. I don't know, it's just that one font. But I'd wanna change that, right? If you wanna change it, you're sick of that default or you're in an environment where you're always using Helvetica New, which I personally like. I like a font with a lot of flexibility. Uh, nonetheless, we can do that. Let's open up. Uh, let's open up. Type, character styles, you're like, I'm so sick of, sick of seeing Myriad every single time. If you go into character styles, if it has these brackets around it, it means it's gonna be the default, okay? This goes for paragraph styles. They're gonna be highlighted uh, for um, graphic styles as well. But right in here, basic character formats. Let's finally change that to, you know, whatever. No, bad. I, I wouldn't do that. Oh, but you could do it to somebody. <laughs> like, why is it every time it starts with Comic Sans? You're like, I don't know. <laughs> oh, don't be cruel. Uh, and then I'll just like make it larger. But this will be my new default. Again, when I restart, right? And remember this, remember how I talked about this default file, right? So this is the everything file. Go in here, change this default character style just like I did over here, it's acumen, variable concept font. That's gonna appear every single time. You don't have to worry about changing it each and every time, right? So again, there it is. Better style. All right, so there we go. Let's actually take a look at what else we can do right in here. By default, when you add some text, this is just basically some heading text. I'll add some body copy right over here, right? Click and drag. And here's some default like body copy. This is just another fun hack, but uh, basically, command shift, um, uh, right arrow bracket will bring this up. I swapped out the default lorem ipsum for hipster ipsum. So it says like, I'm at Subway, tile, chia, goth, kale chips, waste coast, sriracha. It's so funny. <laughs> I love it. It just makes me laugh. I just say and read this. Oh, this is good stuff. Uh, so, <laughs> jean shorts. This is the rest of what my session's gonna be. It's just looking at this. I think I have a fun quote. It's all in there. Uh, let's grab this quote. I snuck this quote in, in here. But uh, you're wondering where this is, by the way. All you need to do is open up. Let's go into Applications, into Illustrator. You just put it in the root right here. This is the placeholder text. That's where everything is. You could always swap that out. Again, just different ways to mess with your coworker is all this session is. <laughs> like, just be like, hi, Larry. That's all it is. Laura Mipsum, hey Larry, then just continue on. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> so good. But let's take that, uh, get sidetracked. I wanna use this quote, this looks good, let's crank it up. Again, this is super easy. I'm trying to think, did we? I think they just mentioned this. I don't think they showed this in the keynote, but let's crank this up to just something. something larger, but uh, nonetheless, I wanna show you this. So right in here, I'm designing this. I'm like, okay, I want some cool type. I'm not sure what I'm gonna go with. Maybe something like that. And uh, what I typically do is I'd go out and launch my browser and just like go out to Typekit, right, and sync a font. So I was like, I would say a year ago, I was like, this is, ooh, it's already, why did I say, why did I say Typekit? It's actually Adobe Fonts now. Thank you for reminding me, Web. That's why I went out here. So again, right, right out here, browse fonts. I'd be like, this is so awesome. Like, I can, 
I can peruse these fonts and sync them directly to my desktop. And it is amazing. Right? I didn't think it could get even easier, right? But it can, because all this, I don't even worry about that. I'm just going to close it, right? Right over here. Um, right up here, I'll just click on this. Anywhere where, there's, where you can change the text, right in here, check this out, drop down, boom. Right, look, check this out. This is fantastic. So right, right in here, I can kind of roll over and see my different fonts, see what works. I could sort through them, right? I can say, hey, you know what? I want a fun script font. Clicking right there. I'm sorting through all the ones on my desktop. So I apologize for that covering up things. It really bothers me. But that's what I'm doing is I can sort through all of my fonts to get to find something that I like in this case. Right, just filtering through on my desktop. I'm, I'm, you know, we, sh we should have had this sooner. So, but I would maybe pick Giddy up. I'm not going to pick Giddy up. <laughs> oh, I'm like, hey, wh what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do, guys? What are you gonna do? All right, don't give me a bad review. Like, I didn't like his font. He's getting a horrible review. Don't do that. But check this out. I'll pick one that you like. I'll, I promise. I'll sort through all of these. This is great whether I want. I'm really into slab serif too. I love slab serif. The cool thing is, is like, okay, nothing of this stuff works for me. I can click find more right here. So consider this Adobe Fonts running from within Illustrator, right? Not InDesign, not Photoshop. Where are you at, InDesign and Photoshop? Illustrator. This is where it does it, right? I'm searching through the slab fonts. And this is, it's actually giving me that preview so I could find the one I want to go with in this one that will try to please everyone, which is just not going to be possible. Uh, so yeah. Say I want to go with this one, for instance. Right, this is typically what I do is I, actually this is what I'll do. This is the best way to do it. You, you could actually favor, this is what you do in the browser. You're like, okay, I'm going to sync that font. I'm syncing it from within Illustrator. Fantastic. I used to sync in, in the browser, and then by the time I got to Illustrator, I'm like, I have no idea what that font was. I do not, I had one thing to remember. It's like, new screen? I don't know. Right, right in here. We can click, and uh, we can see the, show the recently added, and that's what I'd want to do, select that, and these are the, Oh, dat fear doesn't give me the latest greatest. That's why even in the in in uh, Adobe fonts, I usually will add it as a favorite, so I know it appears at the top. But right in here, these are the latest ones that I've added to kind of make up for my bad choice in fonts. But nonetheless, go in here. You can favorite yours because again, you're going to have a thousand fonts, and you're only going to use like five. Favorite those five, and you're good to go. So I think the type enhancements are really huge when it comes to, actually, let's turn that off, not recently added. I guess that's the only one I've added in, in this file. All right, cool. So we picked our correct font. We can start working. I don't know. I really like finally having this kind of capability within Illustrator. I don't have to jump out to my browser, which is nice. Everything the font we want. From there, it's all about manipulating that any way you want to manipulate it, right? A lot of you will, and I won't really worry about this too much, you know, you'll sort of make with warp or make with mesh to kind of bend it into place, you know? Um, I kind of want to focus on this. So I think some people get thrown, like, I'm going to go ahead and adjust this, and I want it to be more playful. So I want everything, I don't want it to be on the same baseline, right? And I think a lot of times the touch type tool gets overlooked because it says touch and I'm not on a touch device. But I could use the touch to device, touch type tool right in here and I can grab that O and I can move that up. It's all in the same baseline and I'm nice hearing you guys say that. <laughs> These are some of the things that like, oh, they probably know about this. Like, oh, I want this one to tilt. Let's rotate it down again. And uh, fantastic, by the way, it's all uh, still on that same line. So if I select back to the type tool, you can see it's all on that same line, right? Really cool what we could do with the touch type tool. And uh, it will actually, it's, I, what, typically you create outlines. And after you've created outlines and all that stuff, that's when you realize you misspelled that word. <laughs> you're like, oh, I gotta go back. Here, it's still a word. It's gonna say, hey, you misspelled that if you run spell check. So touch type tool, being able to move these around all on one line works out great. And here's a case where like, 
I'm just trying to think of different like scenarios that you might run into. And uh, this is one of those, since I was using kind of a handwritten or script font, we have this situation, right? And all I want to do for this, if I just change the color to something else, you know, is make it so this doesn't happen. That really bothers me, right? Super annoying. Well, this is the case where, like, you could just add a new fill, right? So the new fill, if I change the color, takes care of that issue. It's something really simple, new fill, it's all one text, it all flows together nicely. So I encourage you to do that. Use the appearance panel, just overlay a color over that text. When it runs into one another and you have that weird overlap, don't worry about it, you know? And there's sort of a final version, again, with different gradients on it as well, as you can see. All right. One thing I glazed over, oh, I have more to do. Oh, I have too much to do. A couple things, like, so we're doing, we're doing a Spotify logo, whatever. We're, we're doing something. We have these items. Let's have them overlap. Maybe I'm making some sort of sound, something cool. I don't know. Uh, but properties panel, right? Properties panel, I wish, uh, yeah, I, I want it. I, I'm glad this is here today. You're thinking, oh, I don't need this one properties panel. This is everything I need. Like, look at this. Like, I've selected multiple items. Let me select one. It's, it's sort of context aware. It says, hey, oh, you used a gradient? We can edit your gradients. Okay, you clicked off it. Oh, that's the R board. Okay, that's cool. This is contextual. Oh, you clicked on it again. Oh, you clicked on two items. Oh, you might want to align them. You might want to join them, right? It does everything for me right from the properties panel which is really nice. You're gonna need less panels is what you'll realize. Right, we wanna adjust the stroke, we click out right here, round those corners like we typically do, that sort of thing. So use the properties panel is one thing you definitely need to, you should do. Diving into multicolor, look at this. Like I, I was literally like working on this design and I realized I applied, uh, the whole goal was to do a 90s look but I, I made an 80s design, 1980s. <laughs> well, I went too far back. I overshot it, right? But uh, notice right in here, again, what is happening here? What can we do? Type that to eight. Let's do 1980, right? This is a multicolor font. Mar Maria Grunlund, I think she made this font. This is a multicolor font available in Illustrator now, which is really cool. Um, let me actually turn on some of these. Like here's a couple, here's, you know, just a handful of multicolor fonts. Hers is called a Abalone, I guess, but these are multicolor fonts that you can make. So you can make your own, by the way. So I was kind of playing around with it. I've, I've made some, but here's, here's just a simple letter. You can use tools like Font Self Maker is what it's called. You can make fonts within, multicolor fonts from within Illustrator. So I'll launch this. And all I need to do is grab that shape, drag it into Font Self Maker, just like that. And then it will say, hey, what character is this? And then right in here, I just type in A, uppercase A. Like that. Oh, it already knows I made an A. Oh, it's an alt. I didn't even know it did this. You can do alternates as well, which is really cool. So multicolor fonts allowed in, in Illustrator, and you can make them using Font Self Maker, which, again, works out great, right? So now you're aware of those. Catch your spelling errors since it's still text. Let's move on to, I'm going to get into sort of morphing and manipulating, right? Because once we have that font, we want to make this, uh, you know, a little unique. I, again, this is all about tips and tricks. Typically, so I'm doing this Moby Dick, right? So I want to do this design. I want to put that text inside of that shape, right? And typically what that means is you go over here and maybe you do a, like a make with mesh, right? And uh, then sort of determine the horizontal and vertical lines and manipulate that yourself all day long, right? When I don't need to do that, right? I didn't, I even exited out of that already. But uh, all I really need to do is select these two shapes, go up to object, let's go down to, there we go, envelope distort, okay? Make with top object. Top object's gonna be my shape, boop. Oh, it got a little crazy. It got a little crazy. Because that's what I've actually, I actually would do is come in here, 
and uh, make sure you know that this is maybe a little smoother. It was probably it could have been that like one little point, but typically I'll just make it pretty seamless for the most part and wrap it right in there. So we'll just try it with these two. Just like that, that, you get the idea. Because I could imagine you already know make with warp and make with mesh. But that's what I'd want to do in this case. Now I have a nice like book title, right? Oh, guess what? Like again, I know we, know, we, we always spell things correctly, but look. That's editable. There we go. I meant Moby the singer. Just kidding. But here we go. That's editable text that's warping like that. Works out great. I can continue on with my life knowing that I can always undo that and fix whatever I need to. That was all part of transforming, which once, now I want to shift into transforming, right? Check that, this out. This is what I absolutely love. I'm going to just kind of jump into this real fast. I want to trans, do some fancy transforms, right? And uh, not even in this case. I'm just going to make a shape. Everything is made up of basic shapes, right? I mean, everything is, right? You don't have to start from the pencil or anything like that. Does anybody know what I'm making? You might not know just yet. But check this out. I'm going to select all of these. I would just draw. Here's a bunch of circles, but this is actually a shape because what I want to make in this case is, you'll see it in a second, I'm going to use the Shape Builder tool. Selecting the Shape Builder, going into this object here, and I can start to add, say, da 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 Da. And then there's our thought bubble. Bubble. Hold down the option key. Ugh, sorry about the zoom. And then I can get rid of that right there. So all from basic shapes, I have my little, not my thought bubble, but my little speaking bubble right there. And then I can put type in it, whatever I want. These are actually shapes, so I'm going to do my best to, let's see what they are together. Uh, it's like, let's remove. First off, I'm going to remove. Uh, let's remove that. Just holler out if you think you know what it is. Mickey Mouse. Mickey Mouse. Good guess. Huh? Oh, good job. It is a butterfly. Congratulations. Yay. Right there it is. So just remove these pieces, removing these. I can add them accordingly. I have, uh, I have some pins up here since you are. You hollered out, you got that correct, right? From there, I can add, you know, color to it, whatever the case may be, right? So let's turn on, let's actually go here. You can see just some of these other objects. Twitter logo was made with just a bunch of circles, right? It's the most, it's like the perfect shape. And there we have a design, a logo, and some other shapes based on those same lines, right? Really easy, really fun to work with, shape builder, right? Let you add, subtract. Let's move on. Some other things real fast. I'm going to move through this. It's, yeah. Oh, that's adorable. Everybody together. Aww. Right? That's so adorable. All right, so what do we want to do? We want to, like, make a 3D version. I want to make a 3D, like, a little candy heart, right? That'd be nice to make. I can use something like the Blend tool to try to get that. But really, I encourage you to absolutely love 3D in Illustrator, it gives me everything I need, right? 3D, extrude and bevel, turn this on, bop, just like that, and there we have it, right? There we, there we have it for the most part, right? Let's just go ahead and round, and there we have. I mean, it's like pretty simple, right? And I can angle that accordingly. Even if you need to make something in an isometric view, draw out a square or a rectangle, and then just do isometric left, right? Isometric right. You don't have to worry about making each one of the sides. Just give me that perfect cube. Bam, you're done. Use it as a guide. Make your other little characters. Make that city scene like I talked about earlier. Right? But that's what I would do. I have this the way I want. I can manip manipulate this accordingly. I can play with the different settings, which I'm going to do in a second, but click OK. You know, and there you have it. There's like sort of the final little, all those other little. Oh, I didn't even put the, let's put that on there, shall we? Well, we need the little, the little me on it, all right? Let's do that. Extrude and bevel. Always hit this preview. Should be on by default. Does any of you work for Adobe here? 
So you can't say, once you work for W, you can't say that anymore. All right, map art right in here. And sure enough, it's a symbol. So I'd have to find the one that just says me. And well, let's, let's not get out of hand. You don't want to look desperate. <laughs> just be nice and elegant. And again, just make it nice and smooth. And there you have a little vitamin me, just like that. Done and done. You obviously saw the final one. Super easy to make duplicate, change the colors, all that fun stuff. And then we can go from there, right? Even, even here, oh, you thought, you thought I was over. My whole Phil's rant. It, I am not done. <laughs> Phil's, I love Phil's so much. Can we talk about this? Look at this. This is just 3D. Like, I, I still need to fix it. I haven't, I actually haven't, like, rasterized it or rendered it out or anything. But this is much better, even just as a guide for me to work. How is this done? Guess what? Right here, effect, 3D. Let's revolve. Uh, preview, not around that side, but around the right edge. Boom. And uh, there it is. And from there, I would adjust maybe the shading. Come from this side. And uh, you kind of get the basic idea for at least kind of determining the lighting for this. And this is all vector. I could break this apart, make super clean lines. If I would have rendered this in, in Cinema 4D and output a vector file, it would be a mess. But this is a clean uh, vector file is what it makes. And then we can also change it to sort of like a diffuse shading or no shading. I did a different shading for this one. This is my flat version like that. That's another one that I was working with, which I kind of liked as well. Okay, all using 3D. Let's go beyond that. Diving into this a little more. Let's, right, let's, let's turn off all this stuff on uh, that. All right, so yeah, let's go over here. Uh, same thing here. I'm going to do this really fast. 3D. I'm going to uh, revolve it. Preview. Let's go right edge. Right? I'm thinking, okay, it'd be really cool. I want to make a cool like vortex thing, right? I have a custom rotation. I'm going to go ahead and do some mapping of art. This, uh, again, just a more abstract version. Let's grab these, this checker that I spelled correctly, scale to fit. And now we have, you know, obviously, a vor oh, shoot, I, I, I don't think I extended it all the way. But you get the idea of what you can do as we go down. And everybody slowly under my spell, <laughs> right? That's the idea. And here it is in just a fun, maybe a little bit more practical sense. You know, you have that AT&T logo. There's different logos. All they're done, dot, dot pattern wrapped on a sphere. Like, really easy to make. But if you saw this, you'd be like, how do I make that? It's just wrapping it on a sphere, a sphere and uh, you're good to go. And again, that was just fun masking that out. Let's go beyond that. Transform. OK, we already know about this. We already, already did the rotation. Remember how I went in here? It's like, oh, oh, look, it's Illustrator 1.0, right? I already did this. I did. Let's do negative 45 degrees. This might not work, but whatever. So maybe you're going to duplicate that way. But I want to go beyond that, because if I select this, this is the other effect that I'd go into that's probably, that is super flexible. It almost, you almost don't know what to do with it. Distort and transform, go into transform. So I'm going to transform this. So rather than duplicating and copying along the curve, I'm sure I could show you that. I want to come in here and say, hey, you know what? I want to make a number of copies of this. I'm going to make uh, 10 copies or 20 copies. I want to rotate it around this uh, left edge. And uh, then I want to rotate it how many degrees? 180. I'm going to get it wrong. This is, I'm just glad that I could do 180 divided by 10. I know it's something, I know it's, I know, I know it's, is it 18? <laughs> oh, whew. I knew it was 18. Don't judge me. I knew it all along it was 18. <laughs> I still do the math because I'm like, I don't know maths. But that's all I need to do right there. The cool thing about this is this is one just grouped shape. So I can come in here and say, hey, you know what? Let's make this a little more brilliant by changing this, adding, adding to the color, drawing something new in here whatever the case may be, but just again, adding that in there, and you can see it change across the board. Super easy to work with. That is under Distort and Transform. I'll select it. Transform. Guess what? You could always go back in and change it to 20. I get it. Oh, wait. Divided by 2? No. Times 2. I don't know. <laughs> Preview. That was dumb. It was 180 divided by 20. Fine, there it is. 
<laughs> Silly maths. You get the idea. Distort and transform, I love. I can, show you, I can open up other files that have crazy things going on. Let's do some more crazy stuff. What about the skull? Okay, this is just fun stuff, because I'm diving into more complex things maybe around scripts. I think scripts are fantastic. You know, these are third-party scripts uh, that you can find, uh, but scripts, these are just a couple that I have loaded up, because I'm thinking, okay, I want to do this cool skull. I want to fill it with something. Ultimately, I'm going to fill it with little hearts, right? Because let's take the edge off. Circle fill. Somebody else made this. Take advantage of scripts. Let's make this like, I don't know, five and two or something like. 5% is the max size. So it's going to randomly fill it with a bunch of black circles. Clicking OK. Hopefully I just have that shape selected. It'll go through and fill it accordingly. So if you do need to do something, you think there, somebody might have written something that can do that. Well, in this case, somebody did, right? So this is one thing. Fill it with circles. And there's another script I have that says, hey, what other t whatever top selected object you have. I have 50 objects selected. Okay, so this is one of those risks that you run, is it will sometimes break. Trust me, I did it last night. Um, let's make sure I have, oh, that's, oh, no, that's right. Nonetheless, I would fill it with circle, do a circle fill, and then I would do uh, a re find and replace that graphic and fill it with the topmost graphic. So all those circles that you just saw generated, imagine it with me, it will fill it with that heart, right? And that's what I do is select that. I'm sorry that didn't work. I do have the final, and then fill it like this accordingly. And this is actually what it generates. I did it for the eyes. I did it for uh, you know, the skull and everything, and that's what you have, right? So again, use scripts. Sorry, that exa initial example kind of busts. Oh, here's another one I will do. Oh, I love this. Uh, 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 uh. Let me go back to my colors. Let me go back to this first one. And let's select all these. Check this out. What if you have, you know, everything is red, right? I'm like, okay, I have all these little squares. I want them to be a bunch of random colors. Check this out. I'll come in here. I'll select my colors right here. I'm selecting these four colors. And I want to randomly fill all those squares, keep in mind they are all squares, with these ones right here. Ugh, you get the idea. Uh, scripts, random swatches fill with the ones selected, and it randomly filled them. Right? This script alone, I need some randomness, do your thing, which technically from a programming standpoint is pretty easy to, to program for the most part. All I did is select those colors, and you get the idea. All right, there we have it. Moving on from there, uh, so much to do. We went over scripts. I'm going to get into exporting and managing your content. This is fantastic. They showed this in the keynote. Check this out. I love this. Just managing your content and outputting it. Like here, this is the layout that I, that I did, and I have this watermelon, and I have these different shapes, and what if I want to change it? It's complex, right? I can try to select that lime color, but I'm gonna, if, I, if I select by that fill color, it's going to select everything. It's going to select this. But again, they showed this in the keynote right down here. Do a global edit. So I'll just click right here, bink, and it highlights all of these. It rec I did nothing. I did nothing in the background. There's nothing. I'm, not, I'm only using this one hand. And then I can double click, and I can take this say this color right here and you know shift it to something else just make it a little a little a lot darker just to emphasize my point going back and it made it darker everywhere so to this global selection you got to be kidding me right right in here these are just grouped shapes so start global editing it's like hey illustrator's like no no i got it i recognize using my fancy ai or whatever it will select all of those then what happens, you get to the point where you need to start managing and outputting your content, which can get really complex. And uh, that's, you know, that's where I'd have, like, this is, a, this is a piece. This is just my little, I guess, reminder graphic. Right in here, here's all my crazy artboards, right? I could take all these artboards. I could hold down the Shift key. I could select them all. It should have them all selected. But I'm going to do... Uh, rearrange all. So I'm going to give me 10 columns, give them 100 point uh, spacing in between each. 
click OK, and now they're all nice and neat. As a designer, do you appreciate that order? <laughs> Otherwise, that's all you're going to be looking at is that little space right in there that like, is annoying you. Right? And what you could do with artboard tools, you could say, hey, you know what, draw another artboard on top of it. And this is my, I can output this one graphic. Right? I can say, hey, you know what, let's export out this one artboard or all the artboards. Because look what's happening here. Do you guys know about this? Like, they're all in their individual artboards. Export, export for screens. Up. And here's all of them. They're automatically checked, but I can also uncheck all of them and just output this main one that has everything. I would send that to the client. They said, oh, I love it. It's fantastic. Now it output each one, maybe just the character or something. You can have objects that are grouped. And what I would use here, it looks like I actually have the background grouped with it, but asset export. Let's start exporting out all these assets, right? Technically, they're all, you know, you get the idea. Let's do this. Selecting everything, dropping it in here, it's going to make all of those, because each one is grouped, by the way. But the cool thing is, is once I change this little guy, it's actually going up to update in my asset export panel. So if I decide to change this color, it's going to update over here, wherever that character is. And then I can say, hey, you know what? Export out that ping file, or the ping times two, or why are you scaling it? Because all it really needs to be is like an SVG, right? So there we have it exporting out all of those graphics that are added. I can continue to work, and uh, I, have everything, I would have everything named appropriately, and then it would out output all those graphics. I could rename those, I get it, but that's what it does, exporting out content. So really easy, especially when you're working with lots of content, and you get the idea. Winding down now, I know, geez, I only have a couple more minutes and I think uh, I need to save some time for questions, but let me make sure I have, uh, yeah, everything. Uh, organizing, editing, obviously using global edit, outputting out of those artboards, and uh, that's, that's all I have for you. Uh, that pretty much concludes everything. I know there's more, again, the product's like 31 years old, and I only had like 75 minutes, but I did the best I could. All that content is out there. Thank you so much.